Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skåne here in the very south of the country. Now we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a number of times before. We've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years. A good few different styles, but I think it is fair to say that this brewery are best known for being quite solid all round. My particular uh, favourite beer from these guys is a lager brewed with local ingredients. But the beer we're going to have a look at today is one of their latest releases through Sea Stemble Agate. It's a style that I haven't tried too often from them in the past, but it is a style that I very much enjoy. So needless to say, I'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this beer as well. So, uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head to Eslöv, which is a little bit to the northeast of me here in Lund, and we're going to return to the wonderful Remaluv Gårdsbrygge. So, this particular beer is called Dark Disorder. It comes in at 10% ABV, and this one is an Imperial Stout. So, um, yeah, this beer was released as part of the Lokalt Osmoska League assortment through Systembolag here in Sweden for January of 2023. This beer actually got pushed to the back of the fridge a little bit, mainly because of its style. We know that Imperial Stouts will last for a little bit of time, but uh, yeah, I can't think if I've actually ever had an Imperial Stout from Raymoulouf Gors Brewery in the past. Certainly back in the day, they had a very nice uh, kind of milk stout that was called the Sweet Hoof. If I remember correctly, that was when uh, Raymoulouf were still bottling their beers, of course. But uh, yeah, I can't recall any Imperial Stouts that I've reviewed from them on the channel before. So this should make for quite an interesting review. But uh, yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see how we get on. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Raymoulouf Gors Brewery in the past, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember that you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So go into the homepage, use the search bar, put in your local town, state, county, province, prefect, or whatever you like. If I review beers from the local area that you're searching for, they will pop up. Failing that though, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. And of course, there are playlists there for many different countries, but you'll find this one in the Swedish playlist along with many other things. But yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a little bit about Raymoulouf Gors Brewery then. So, Raymoulouf Gors Brewery, as I've mentioned to you before, are based on a farm in Eslöv, hence the name Gord in the, uh, the Gors Brewery name. But uh, they're based on a farm in Eslöv, which is just a little bit to the northeast of me here in Lund, in Skåne, in the very south of Sweden. But these guys have been brewing since the winter or autumn of 2014, and in January of 2015, they started selling their beers through Seastembolaget. But the owner and founder of the company is Håkan Nielsen, and together with his wife Michelle, he started his plan for a brewery a couple of years prior to this, and the brewery is located on his family's farm. And Håkan is apparently the fifth generation of his family to uh, farm the countryside here in Skåne. But the old barn was renovated and a brew house of 1500 litres was installed, and then they hired Hampus Olofsson as the brewer in August of 2014, and he had previously worked for Malmö Brewing Company. But uh, over the, the last few years, they've been gradually expanding the capacity of the brewery. They now have a 3,000 litre brew kit and they invested in a lot of new fermentation tanks in the spring of 2018, which apparently takes their theoretical capacity per year up to a possible 800 thousand litres of beer. But in 2019 they opened their summer pub which they had intended to, con to continue every year and uh, I'm not sure if that has continued due, uh, due to the pandemic and things like that but they were planning further expansion to the brewery over the course of 2020 but this was delayed from what I understand. Uh, the brewery actually made a big contribution to helping the business survive because there were parts of the farm business that were struggling but it was actually the sales of beer that kept the family farm operating which I think is pretty cool but uh, over the last year or two they have continued to uh, to brew and get new beers out there which has been very nice to see and uh, they have been building up their customer base as well but as of february 2023 when i'm filming this review for you these guys have produced around 100 different kinds of beer and uh, they do some really interesting things like quite often 
they will brew with local ingredients. They've got their Skonsk Pilsner, of course, which is brewed with uh, local malts, uh, local hops, and they've also got their house yeast in there. And from what I understand, they are now doing a Dunkel beer as well, which is made completely with uh, local Skonsk malts and Skonsk hops. So that should be quite an interesting beer to have a taste of as well. But uh, yeah, as I say, these guys do some really, really nice beers, very solid stuff. But if you get the chance to try the Skonsk Pilsner, then this is one that I would highly highly recommend you have a look at their christmas beer the red slope is very nice as well the imperial radio but uh yeah generally uh, a very solid all-round brewery and one of my favorite local ones that i have here in scona actually but uh yeah that is all i can really tell you for the moment about raymond louv gord's brewery uh, hopefully we can feature these guys on the channel at some point for a kind of meet the brewer video we'll need to see about that going uh, further forward but uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about these guys, you can of course check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all of the different beers that these guys have produced thus far. So uh, yeah, let's go on and have a little look at the beer itself. So just to let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. As you can see, it's quite similar to what we've seen from Raymalouf Gord's Brewery in the past. If I bring it right up to the camera, there you can see Raymalouf Gord's Brewery. Move it a little bit further back and you can see Dark Disorder. But quite often they will have this kind of cream coloured band at the bottom of the can to tell you what beer it is. It's a gold top can, this one, 330 millilitres. And I actually can't remember what I paid for this beer. It must have been in the region of like 55 or 60 kroner. We'll see 60, but that is about uh, six euros uh, in the region of £5.50 sterling and maybe $6.50 American. But yeah, that's not bad for a 10% Imperial Stout in a little 330 milliliter can. But yeah, as I say, if memory serves me correctly, this is one of the first Imperial Stouts that I've tried from Amelouf Gors Brewery. But back in the day, the Sweet Hoof Stout was also very nice. And this is also a barley malt only Imperial Stout too, which makes it quite interesting. But uh, yeah, as I said, released in the January local and uh, small assortment. So we see Stimbolag here in Sweden. Let's just get this guy out and see what it's all about. Dark Disorder, 10% Imperial Stout from Raymond of Gors Brewery in Eslev here in Skåne. Very, very curious. So you can watch the pour now. Yeah, nothing particularly unusual about this beer when you consider what style it is. I have to say. But uh, yeah, let's have a little look at this head before it disappears. So you can see this beer is poured with about a quarter to a one third finger of a frothy, I would say kind of light beige coloured head. That is of course fading away to be a very thin layer very fast, but it's leaving the ring around the edge of the glass. Some medium sized bubbles there on the surface and a few little ones going further up. But yeah, it looks very, very nice I have to say. Uh, but yeah, in terms of carbonation, one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there. But uh, yeah, nothing else really to say about that otherwise. But yeah, there are just a few little wispy bits on the top of the beer now and that nice ring around the edge of the glass there. But you can have a little quick look at the colour of that foamy ring there. But I have to say, it does look pretty nice actually. So uh, yeah, in terms of the colour of this beer, I would say this one is pretty much as you would expect from an Imperial Stout. Black is night. Remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malt that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But any barrel agent you do or any adjuncts you put in will affect the colour of the beer as well. But uh, yeah, when it comes to Imperial Stouts, because of the presence of like special beer or black malt or whatever is actually put in the beer, it's very difficult to actually change the colour of these beers by barrel aging them or anything like that. But uh, yeah, beer, I have to say, does look pretty much as you would expect of an Imperial Stout. If we shine the light through it, it does have a little touch of that kind of Coca-Cola, Pepsi coloured edge to it. But otherwise, yeah, it's pretty much what you would expect of the style. So um, yeah, let's have a wee look at the aroma of this one then and see how we get on. I don't think there's anything else we really need to say about the um, the appearance of this beer. So let's do that. That does smell very nice actually. Yeah, the aroma of this beer 
I think I've just got a little bit of it over the side of the glass there, but the aroma of this beer is very kind of old school and it's actually quite a dry uh, imperial stout, I have to say. It strikes me as being like an old school Russian imperial stout rather than anything else. So yeah, I do quite like that about this one. But first impression of it is that it's very bready and very smooth, uh, very old school, a little bit of fruitiness, a little bit of green component. I think this is going to be uh, pretty nice actually. So let's try and break that down for you and just describe it a wee bit more kind of in depth. So yeah, the other thing we should point out about this is that a lot of the um, the Remaluve Gorsberg beers are organic and for me the way that the malt comes across and the aroma and flavour is just a little bit different if they use organic malt but we'll talk about that a little bit later on but yeah um yeah on the um on the malty side of things with this beer you have a little bit of um in the backbone of the beer you've got a little bit of a roasty toasty not quite well fired and dry but definitely a little bit of like a a kind of um you know slightly well fired bread roll top you can smell that form in the backbone of the beer there are a few elements of kind of woodiness in that malt base backbone as well there's also just a little touch of tobacco to the malt base in this beer as well as i've said to you many a time before we quite often when i was studying chemistry we quite often used to use tobacco as a sort of test as a test compound when we were doing analytical chemistry because it's got so much stuff in it so you could test for pretty much everything but you do get a little bit of this uh, kind of sweet tobacco -y note coming out of this beer so yeah well fired bread crust little bit of woodiness some sweet tobacco in there and then above that you start to get a lovely kind of sweet german sort of rye bready character out of this one so that big sweet german rye bread there's a little bit of a lighter wholemeal brown bread in this beer as well and then above that you're starting to get the more kind of chocolatey and uh, brown sugary characters coming out of this beer as well so um yeah Aroma-wise, I think this one goes together really quite. Uh, it goes together really quite nicely. So, yeah, above the the kind of bready notes, and the bready notes actually give you a little bit of an almost kind of crackery character as well. So you've got a little bit of that Jacob's cream cracker in there. Um, and then with the bready notes, like I can see you've got a sweeter, more oily German rye bread. You've also got a little bit of that wholemeal brown bread as well. And then above all of that, you have a little bit of a kind of more chocolatey note out of this one. There's a little bit of a kind of like cocoa nibby, dry chocolatey character coming out of this beer. So yeah, a little bit of a dry cocoa nibby character. And I'd say, but I'd say the whole chocolatey vibe of this beer is actually quite sweet. There's a sort of 30 or 40% uh, cocoa chocolate in this one. And... Uh, yeah, it's sort of 30-40% cocoa chocolate for me. And then you've also got a little bit of a... Pardon me. You've also got a little bit of a kind of darker chocolate in this there as well. Maybe like a 50-60% cocoa chocolate. But the chocolatey side of this beer is actually quite dry. I'm very curious about the wort boil in this one as well. Because there's also quite a wee bit of kind of brown sugary character coming out of this beer. And uh, one thing I've often mentioned in uh, Imperial Stout and Barley Wine and Scotch Ale, you know, these big more, these more big malty style beer reviews, is that when you, when you boil the wort a little bit more, uh, when you have a longer wort boil, the, um, you often get those more kind of leathery brown sugary notes coming out of the beer. So, um, yeah, you can smell a little bit of that leathery brown sugar in this one, but there's also a bit of a straight up sweet caramel in there. Also some McVitie's digestive biscuit notes, but yeah, as I say, a smooth kind of leathery brown sugary character to it as well. But um, I get the feeling just from the aroma of this beer, I don't think this one is like double mash. I think this is a single mash imperial stout. So it's a little bit more old school and it's like a, it is like a Russian imperial stout, but it's one of the smoother and sweeter variants of that substyle that I've come across before but yeah there are one or two little nutty characters in there little touches of honeycomb and stuff like that and little bits of woodiness coming out of the the base of the beer as I've said but aroma wise the malty and yeasty side of things goes together very very well actually um yeah 
I do like this. In terms of the um, the hoppy side of things, then I think we've said everything we need about the malty and yeasty side of the beer. On the hoppy side of things, there's a little bit of hoppy character to this one on the green component, but not overly much. I mean, in terms of the the green component, there's a little bit of smooth earthiness in there. There's a little bit of herbal character as well. You've also got a wee touch of that kind of floral aromaticity and also some nice grassiness. Uh, as well but yeah the the um, um the the green side of this beer it is quite interesting as i say it's an imperial stout you could actually age this beer for a bit longer and let some of the green component drop out but as it stands the green component isn't overly strong and this one like i say there's just a little bit of earthiness a little bit of herbal character some nice floral note in there and then just a little bit of lighter uh, like a little bit of lighter grassiness so i do like how that all kind of pieces together actually it gets a thumbs up from me um on the um on the fruity side of things then just to round off the aroma the fruity side of the beer for me is actually quite interesting because it does have um i mean the one thing i, I would add to about the malty and yeasty side of this beer is you do get a little bit of a kind of clad like a swedish chocolate cake note out of this beer the more you smell of it so you have got a little bit of a cakey element in there but the fruity side of this beer has actually got a little bit of sharpness to it so when you first smell it you've got a little bit of raisin you've certainly got a little bit of plum in there as well so a bit of raisin a bit of juicy plum definitely a little bit of fig and then you've also got a wee bit of a black currant, a blackberry sort of thing. So these are very old school notes, actually. This beer is one of these ones that it doesn't really show you anything you wouldn't expect at the style. But it seems to be just kind of really well put together. So we need to see if this actually translates into the uh, into the flavour and, uh, and see how that plays out. But aroma-wise, this is very nice, like a proper old school, uh, smooth Russian Imperial style, actually. So yeah, as I always say, take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But I think it is about time that we have a taste of this one and see what it's all about. So yeah, this one is the Dark Disorder, an Imperial Stout at 10% ABV from Remaluf Gorts Brigadie here in, uh, in Esluv, here in Skjone in the very south of Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skull, cheers. Yeah, that's really nice. So, in terms of the, just a, a first impression of this beer, it's actually a very, very smooth and kind of silky Imperial Stout. You can feel that as you go further into the aftertaste, it kind of dries up and shows you a little bit of that more. It definitely shows you a little bit more of that kind of roasty, toasty, Russian Imperial Stout type quality. But otherwise, it's actually quite, uh, it really is quite mellow in that sense. So... Yeah, the way that this beer goes together... From that perspective, is, is is really quite interesting. I like, I do like how this um, how this goes together. Um, yeah, in terms of the. In ter yeah, in terms of the. The overall feel of this beer, it's a very smooth but slightly dry and old school Russian Imperial style. I certainly do like how it goes together. So yeah, we'll look at the middle third of the palate first and break this down in the way that we always do. So yeah, middle third of your palate then, you've got a little bit of that roasty, toasty, well-fired uh, bread crusty backbone. That certainly sits there. So, like I say, roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crusty backbone. Toward the front of that middle third of your palate, you do get a little touch of woody character in there. And I will also point out that the sort of roasty, toasty backbone of this beer, um, 
it's actually not that dry and well fired. It's actually kind of very smooth in a lot of ways. So above the bread crusty dryness that you have there, you have a, a layer of um, you have a layer of kind of more dense and slightly sweet sort of German rye bread in there, and that that's quite nice actually. It's like a slightly more caramelized uh, German rye bread. So yeah, bread crust, bit of woodiness in there, some nice sweet rye bread. Then above that, you get the lighter. You do get the lighter, uh, kind of more wholemeal, brown bready character coming out of this one. So yeah, the way that goes together is actually, it is pretty nice in this one. So yeah, you've got a mixture of bread, rye bread, wholemeal brown bread, and then yeah, uh, toward the front of that middle third of the palate, again, within the bready side of the beer, you do get a few little kind of nutty type flavours out of this one. It's like a sort of almondy, pecan sort of note out of this one. I'm getting a little bit of that. I don't really eat nuts, to be honest with you, so, you know, my flavour palate is not the most in tune with it, with different nut varieties, I have to say, but there is a little bit of an almost nutty flavour in there. But then above the wholemeal brown bread... You've got a little bit of a more kind of chocolatey note coming out of the beer, which is interesting too. So yeah, um, on top of the bread, at the back of that, um, at the back of that middle uh, third of your palate, you've got a little bit more kind of cocoa nibby. You do have a little bit of a more kind of cocoa nibby type quality coming out of this one so you can feel the chocolate is there but it's quite a dry and as I say cocoa nibby type chocolate but almost kind of toasty as well so at the back of that middle third of your palate you've got maybe a six uh, maybe a 70 percent cocoa chocolate note and you can feel the dryness of the cocoa nibs there but as you move further forward you can feel it's quite smooth you can feel yeah you've got that nice kind of smooth cocoa nibby quality and it gradually sweetens up as you come kind of further forward and as you reach the front of that uh, as you reach the front of that middle third of your palate um, you do get a wee bit of a more kind of uh, you do get a little bit of a more milky chocolate note out of this one like a sort of 30 40 percent cocoa chocolate so yeah definitely the chocolate kind of mellows out and this highlights the thing i've said in many reviews before that darker and more bitter flavors come out further back on the palate whereas sweeter flavors come out further forward but above the chocolatey layer, you start to get some of the kind of brown sugars out of the beer as well. And this beer isn't too heavy in its brown sugary notes, but they're, they are definitely there. So yeah, in terms of the brown sugary side of the beer, you can feel the base in the middle of your palate, in the middle third of your palate, you've got that nice kind of oily circle. The base of that oily circle is a little bit more kind of leathery but yeah definitely a little bit of a more kind of oily leathery type quality in there above that you've got a bit more of an oily treacle molasses type note out of the beer as well and then in the dead center of your palate you've got a more kind of sweet caramelly note so yeah dead um yeah in the dead center of your palate definitely a sweet up straight up caramel note as you move further out from that oily treacle molasses and then underneath it's a, a more kind of leathery dry brown sugar and that of course sits above that chocolatey layer so uh yeah like i say very very smooth imperial stout this one not quite as dry as other russian imperial stouts i've come across but whatever it's doing i, I have to admit i do quite like this one so it gets a thumbs up from me so yeah in terms of the um yeah in terms of the the middle third of your palate, I think we've said everything we really need to about this one. So let's look at the, uh, the, the, the middle and back third of your palate then. So the border region between middle and back third of your palate, you get a nice little bit of bready build up in there, which I think goes together really well. For me, it's like a more kind of brown rye bready sort of thing. The base of that back mm -hmm. third of your palate is definitely a little bit more of a, you get more of that kind of roasty, toasty, dry, 
well-fired bread crust that I was talking about. As I've always said, like darker and more bitter flavours come out further back on the palate, sweeter flavours come out further forward. But above that um, well-fired bread crust, you get a little bit of an almost kind of crackery and woody note in there. And then you start to get the sweeter rye bread that I talked about earlier, but it's a bit more airy and taller. And then again, you've got the, the wholemeal brown bready character just sitting on top of that as well. So the same layers that are in the middle third of your palate are there in the back third of the palate, but just a bit taller and a wee bit more kind of airy in a sense. Above all of that though, you've got a wee touch of a kind of cocoa nibby type quality. And uh, yeah, I do like how that goes together too. So yeah, you can feel there's a little bit of that cocoa nibby dryness just creeping on top of the bready uh, layers on the back third of the palate. But above all of that, you've got a wee bit of a more kind of sweet, uh, yeasty type quality as well. So above everything else, you've got this more kind of farmhousey brown bready type quality with a little bit of honeycomb in it, which I, I can certainly appreciate as well. So yeah, the way that all that goes together is quite nice, but definitely back third of the palate, you can feel the flavour is taller. Then uh, the further forward you come, you can feel the flavours just kind of squash together that little bit more and condense down. So uh, yeah, the way that, that the beer goes together in that sense, I think is, is very, very nice and it gets a big thumbs up from me. So uh, yeah, I like that for sure. Let's look at the hoppy side of things then. So, um, back uh, corners of your palate then, the green component first. Uh, you do get a little bit of earthiness out of this beer. I would be very curious to know what hop has been used in this one. Maybe a little bit of Ramling's Cross from England or something. It's, there's just a few things that are setting off my contextual memory in that, in that sense. So yeah, there's a little bit of earthiness there. And as you move further forward, it gets a little bit herbal on the front corner, uh, on the, the, the back kind of size of your palate there but as you push towards the front corners of your palate it gives you a little bit more kind of floral aromaticity and it's the sort of herbal and earthy kind of thing that makes me think of uh, English hops you know they have that inherent character to them so you're yeah, a little bit earthy a little bit herbal and as you push further forward a little bit more floral but round the front curve of the palate it's a little bit lighter and grassy which I also quite enjoy and uh, yeah it's, it's kind of interesting in that sense. So the, obviously the longer you age this beer, the more the green components are going to drop out of it. But yeah, I think the um, the, the green component in this beer is actually quite nice. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the way the green component in this one goes together, I think, is, is quite, um, it's really quite nice. So, uh, yeah, it gets a big thumbs up from me, this one, on the, the green component. I think the, the sort of herbal and earthy character actually blends in quite well with the kind of bready dryness and um, smoothness from the brown sugars and also the cocoa nibby side of things. So the way that the malty and, and hoppy character in this beer goes together is, is pretty good, actually. So it comes across as a very old school, almost like cask stout, but obviously you're talking about something here that is 10% uh, ABV, so... Yeah, that's also worth taking into consideration too. But the green component of this one and the malty side of the, the beer go together very well. Let's look at the front third of your palate then and just see how everything pieces together. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of that bready build up in there. It's like a kind of sweet, almost like sweet rye bread, but still a little bit grainy at the same time. The base of that front third of your palate is more kind of, you've got a little bit of the bread crust in there. You've got the sweet rye bready brown character and then you've got a little bit of the wholemeal brown bread on top of that but then you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So let's have a wee look at that. So yeah, fruity side of this beer is actually quite similar to what we picked up in the aroma. So at the back of that front third of your palate, you've got some nice raisiny notes on top. You've got some nice juicy oily plum. And then underneath, you start to, you do get a little touch of a kind of pruny and sultana type note in there. A little bit of date as well. So yeah, raisins, plums, we touch a prune, date and sultana. You know, you've got a little bit of that. But as you move toward the front of that middle third of your palate, you certainly have a little bit more of a, 
a kind of figgy type quality and as you move into the front half of the front third of your palette it's got more of a kind of you know oily black currant you know underneath and then the juicier sharper blackberry on top like very old school in that sense like i say i, I would not be surprised at all if this beer is using a little bit of english brandon's cross very popular hop to use in old school english imperial stouts and, uh, and english barley wines too there's just something about the the flavor profile of this beer on the hoppy side of things that's very familiar to me so yeah i would not be surprised if this beer is using a bit of brandon's cross but yeah raisins plums prunes dates a little bit of sultana wee bit of fig in the middle of that front third of your palate black currant and then a little bit of blackberry i think that des that that describes the the fruity side of the beer quite well and that fruity character really is quite oily actually but gets a thumbs up from me this is a proper old school uh, russian imperial stout for me uh, but yeah, I think that's everything we really need to say about the flavour profile of the beer. Let's have a little look at the um, the mouthfeel then. So for me, this beer is kind of pushing bottom end of full bodied, but it's it's definitely top end of, uh, of mid bodied. The carbonation is very smooth. Like I said earlier, it's very silky and very smooth in that sense. So um, yeah, I like that about it too. So yeah, big kind of silky smooth uh, type quality to this beer. Still feels very clean at the same time. In terms of IBUs, I wouldn't be surprised if this beer is about 40 or 50 IBUs. But then again with this one, it's got quite a bit of dryness to it that builds up in the aftertaste. So I wouldn't be surprised if that dryness could be conflated with IBUs. So maybe the IBU count is about 40 or 50 in this one but the, the dryness gives you the impression that it could be 50 or 60 IBUs if that at all makes sense but the malt base in this beer it's got dryness to it it's got smoothness it's got density it's also got that kind of dry sweetness um but yeah it goes together really quite well but on the fruity side of things you've got that lovely kind of juicy uh and oily fruity character from the berries in this one like we said figs raisins bit of plum and uh, all of this sort of thing properly old school russian imperial stout this one it gives you everything you want but overall it's a very very smooth beer i have to say so um yeah i think we can uh, we can leave it at that for this one this was the dark disorder a 10 percent imperial stout from uh raymond of gores brigade in eslif here in skona in the south of sweden really enjoyed trying this one uh, a, just a properly old school beer this one which you don't come across all that often these days but certainly one of the the smoother examples of russian imperial stout that i've come across in recent times as well but uh, yeah certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again and that is the main question when it comes to these beer reviews would you drink it again yes definitely so uh yeah i think that's everything we need to say about this one so once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from Raymond louv gores Brigery as well and we will absolutely return to these guys once again at some point in the near future until then slange it scott cheers and see you guys in the next review ciao just now